Live from McNeese Ballpark at Russ Chandler Stadium, it is once again time for the Southwestern Athletic Conference Baseball Tournament. Today, game three in session two, day two of the tournament, as we are live at the Yellow Jack, home of the Yellow Jackets, Georgia Tech University here in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, Alabama State, the Hornets, will take on the Florida A&M Rattlers. The Rattlers coming in after a big win against one of the uh, teams that could have been hot in this conference, and that was Texas Southern University. They take on Alabama State, who run Real Prairie View A&M yesterday by the score of 11 to one. The number one seed of the East will take on the number three seed in Florida A&M. Hi everybody, Santoria Black along with the Hall of Fame coach Roger Cador <laughs> bringing you today's ball game between the Hornets and Florida A&M. Coach, we saw a very exciting game as we had a chance to look at the skyline last <laughs> night and Grambling won a close game against Jackson State. Jackson comes back, loses a tight game against Bethune-Cookman. And uh, you know, just you, like we said, baseball is a funny sport. It's very funny. You know, because Jackson could have won both of those games with a little break toward the end. But you know what? You're never going to win games if you don't throw strikes. Yeah. You can't defend walks. And that's what happened to Jackson today. They uh, end up walking three people in the top of the bottom of the ninth, and it cost them. Well, of course, now we've got uh, at least part of that bracket settled. First of all, Florida A&M and, and Alabama State. The winner of this game actually will just be waiting in the wings because someone will have to beat them twice. And, of course, they will take on the, – the loser will take on Prairie View A&M University coming up tomorrow. Somebody's going to have to play two games tomorrow in order to get to the uh, championship game, or I should say to the uh, semifinals on Saturday with a shot at the championship game on uh, Saturday on uh, Sunday. So it's really going to be an interesting ball game between these two teams, Florida A&M. And Alabama State played some very close games this year. As a matter of fact, two of the games were, of course, uh, in extra innings. Lineup here for Florida A&M. Ty Jackson batting first, then Ty Hanchi, Jared Weber, uh, Jermichael Bastardo, Sebastian Greco, Joseph Pierney, then uh, Adam Hader Moda, Will Brown, Jalen Niles, and Caleb Granger on the mound. Here is the first pitch by the starting pitcher for Alabama State, Ricardo Rivera. And we are underway, 1-0 now the count. How beautiful it is to have for Alabama State to have your first two starters, one eleven and zero, and now Ricardo ten and zero. Absolutely, <laughs> and I the mean, freshman, the freshman. You know that's pretty doing good, and then you got your whole staff waiting. The bullpen, which he says is pretty doing good. Yeah, definitely had a chance to talk to both of these coaches uh, before the game today, and this pitch just missing for a ball. And the count is now even. Well, this is these are two teams that are very familiar with each other. And that pitch is a strike. And Ty Jackson goes down looking to start things off. I tell you, I I'm looking at the just the mannerism, the body language of Alabama State. It all it says to me is confidence. We are very confident in what we can and will do. That pitch swung on and fouled back into the backstop. It's in for an exciting ball game today. We hope so. You know, in life, it's only two things that are guaranteed. Death and taxes. Oh, there you go, Centurion. <laughs> That's popped up to the third baseman. <laughs> and there's two outs now. <laughs> yes. So we're not guaranteed a great game, but we're hoping. Pray, yes. Yeah, there you go. After, after the the, uh, the uh, second game of the day, which came right down to the wire. Right. You hope for a great game here. First game, 9-6, nine, nine to six, I believe it was. 9-6, nine, uh, nine to six, Texas yeah. Southern winning yeah. or losing that game. And, uh. Well, you, you know, you look at Coach Mike Rob's team, they four bad innings in that ball game really was the yeah. That was the story of that contest. And his bullpen did didn't do him any justice. He couldn't get he didn't get much out of it. So uh that's always tough. And you know, and I was saying to Charles the whole thing time, you don't really know what you're gonna get when you go to the bullpen, especially at the collegiate level. Yeah. 
Swung on, foul. I saw our producer, James Crenshaw, breathe with a sigh of relief that nothing got hit. <laughs> He's got really good insurance. <laughs> That's what I hear, at least. Here's a pitch by Rivera. Swung on, and it's going to be hit in the center field. And Florida AM is on the board with their first hit of the ball game. Now to bet. Jan Michael Bastardo, who is hitting 382, best hitter in the lineup. He has played and started in all 42 games for Florida AM. He's got 144 at bats, 10 home runs. First pitch outside. I'll tell you what, Florida AM and Bethune Cookman. Making some noise here in the tournament. Yeah. Okay, Coach Jamie Shoup. He's uh, been Florida, in Florida AM now, I believe, 10 years. 10 years. Yep. And, uh, of course, was a coach at Florida State, so very familiar with the area in Tallahassee. It's Seven. amazing how fast time flies by. Yeah. You know, tell you a little story, you know, back in 1980, uh, 1908, 90. Yeah. Shot into right field. Coming around second base is Weber. Bastardo in with a single. And now there are two aboard for Florida A&M. Yeah. Yeah. A really clean hit. He took the pitch where, right where it was thrown on the outside and hit it hard to right field. Greco now coming to the plate for Florida A&M. And you take a look at uh, Greco. He's a junior, hitting 295. He started in 37 games this year, 12 home runs. So he can swing the stick, 54 RBI. He's got the most RBI in the lineup today. Yeah, they've got a lot of people who've got high averages also. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what happened. Yeah, they're starting to There's run. There's a shot, and this one is going to get to the second baseman. He gets it over to the first baseman. Did he get it over and cleanly? Yes, he did. And Alabama State gets out of a jam. So no runs. Two hits, no errors, and two men left on base for the Florida A&M Rattlers to start things off here in the first inning. No score between the Rattlers and Alabama State Hornets coming up to bat here at the 2023 SWAT Tournament. Back after this. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. So you, you see the Google building in the background to the right side here at the stadium 2023 SWAC baseball tournament at Russ Chandler Park here in Atlanta, Georgia. Man, what a beautiful sight. We had a chance to see the uh, 
Midtown area lit up last night. Scrambling and Jackson played. Taking a look at the lineup for Alabama State, much like yesterday's. Randy Flores, then McIntosh, Matos. Hey, hey, had a good day yesterday. Coach, Boom, my Jack, boy, hey. Jack, hey. Ali LaPred, Corey King, Christian Lopez, Trenton Jamison, Jamal George, and Ricardo Rivera is on the mound. Now going down to the sideline is first batter for Alabama State, Randy Flores. Coming to the plate, Charles, the Bishop of the SWAC. What's going on, brother? Hey, how you doing, Satori? I tell you what, looking forward to a great game today. You're talking about two offensive juggernauts in terms of FAMU and Alabama State. Alabama State top 10 and in 10 different categories of the offense in the SWAC, and then FAMU uh, with two 50-plus RBI players. And this one deep on the warning track and able to come down with it, the right fielder, Jared Weber for Florida A&M, and there's one out here. And that one took a ride, Coach. Yes, it did, and I kept waiting to see what was going to happen because, as the charge said, it's an urban wind stream. Urban jet stream jet over stream. there, right center. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to make sure we get it right, you know. Kyler McIntosh coming up next for Alabama State. That one a nice, probably went right back into the inside. And going to see some interesting uh, pitching here today. Caleb Granger on the mound. The thing I like about Alabama State is that they're aggressive. They attack the strike zone. And you find out when you do that, you're going to have a, a, a multitude of success. Tell you what, Alabama State uh, yesterday against that uh, Prairie View team, of course, here's a shot down the third baseline foul. We saw early on in that ball game, Alabama State setting the tone in that first inning. They were able to put four runs up on the board. Yes, they did. Uh, I don't know if they'll do it today here. But, you know, the key is it's not when you do it, it's as long as you do it. Yep. <laughs> and for Randy Flores yesterday, had a little trouble at the plate. Went 0 for 4, hoping to turn his fortunes around a little bit. Here's a pitch to the outside. And I'm looking at the pitcher who is pitching. Unless he's got pinpoint control, he's not going to be able to do a lot with him. So he's got to really have really good pinpoint control and be able to change speeds on his pitches. So let's see how he fares because he's not overpowering. Of course, this is game two today, and here's a shot into right field. This one is going to drop. Oh, it fell into foul territory just barely, though, as uh, the right fielder for Florida A&M, Weber, was nearly disastrous for him. Yeah, the, the son, obviously, he uh, – and based upon this right here, it's the son the issue. I saw it on his glasses, so. Uh, and he was worried about the defense also. That's one of the things that outfielders and players in general experience when you're playing in a park you're not familiar with, you know. But you got to come early and try to, to walk it so you can get familiar, familiar with the situation. And this one goes over the first base bleachers. Beautiful park, and it is right here in Midtown Atlanta on the campus of Georgia Tech. Lots of things going on here, including commencement. Got a lot of things going on here around campus. Yeah. Here's a pitch. That oh, one's yeah. in there for a strike. And McIntosh goes down for the second out of the inning. Ian Matos. And Matos yesterday. This is a, a classic tournament umpire. He understands the situation. He's going to make players swing the bat. And that's why you got to have people who understand this is not a regular season game. It's a tournament. So guys got to come here and swing the bat. Small zone umpires don't do well in these kind of situations. I'm going to have you explain that here in just a second. Here's a shot in between short and third. And Matos on for a base hit. Alabama State's first hit of the ball game. When you talk about that term, the short 
was it? Small, small zone. Small zone. Well, let's say you play four games a day. That's the first thing you look at. You start at 9. They don't want to keep people here until 12, 1 o'clock at night, okay? So you have to speed the game up. And what, how, do, how do you speed it up? You widen the strike zone a little. And that's the way you do it. And people understand that you might not do it in the regular season game, but in this kind of situation, you want to do it. And you're not going to hurt anybody by doing that, okay? One of your players, Jack Hay, coming up to the plate here. Is that my man, Jack Hay? That is Jack Hay. Oh, my. Pick the click. Guy with a, not the greatest sexy body, but he can swing the bat. And that's the way we look at it, you know. And yesterday in that ball game, uh, Jack Hay, of course, he had a home run in that ball game, had a couple of uh, singles, three singles as a matter of fact, scored two runs. Had a good day at the office. Yes, he did. And I think the pitcher knows it too. He's trying to pull the string, throw off-speed pitches to him. And he's probably saying we got first base open, so we're going to be careful with it. That went in there for a strike. Jack Hay hitting 376, and this is including yesterday's game. Mm -hmm. Here's a pitch. Just missing the inside corner, and Jack Hay will take his base, much to the disliking of the Florida a and faithful that have come over. Well, you're never going to satisfy the fans. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be kind of hard to do that. <laughs> Ollie LaPred coming to the plate now for Alabama State, another one of those Hornets that had a home run in yesterday's ball game. He had a home run, a double. Coming into the ball game, hitting 389. Here's a pitch, just to the outside. The one thing a pitcher doesn't want to get into is saying, I'm not going to let you hit me. They got to swing the bat. And if you're throwing it four feet off the plate, you're not going to get them to bite on that. McNeese Baseball Park here at Russ Chandler Stadium. Side of the 2023 tournament. Here's a pitch, swung on, foul. I had a chance to talk with uh, Coach Shoup from Florida A&M and Coach Vasquez before the game. And very great respect between the two. Coach Vasquez and Coach Shoup have known each other a long time. And talk about, you know, you have your game, of course, on the field, but really great friends off the field. And that's the way baseball coaches are. I mean, more than any other sport, they really, they need each other. And this one gets away from the pitcher, or from the uh, catcher. And now both runners advance. You know, he got the first two outs, and then, you know, you run into this kind of stuff. I worry that he keeps looking over to the dugout. I'd rather him look for the, to the catcher to get the sign because that's the traditional way of getting the sign, you know? So you've had a pass ball and a wild pitch here. And that one's a strike. A full count now. Two men on and two down. Ali LaPred. Swung on, you down go. the third baseline. Coming in from third is Matos. Jack Hay coming around, he scores. And going in for a stand-up double is LaPred. <clears throat> well, Coach, here we go. Well, you fool run and start throwing balls, walk people you know, against uh, this lineup. You're asking for problem, And he's not overpowering. So uh, this kind of guy has got to be able to change speed and hit uh, locations.
Alabama State extremely powerful offensively. And these three teams, two teams, although Alabama State took five out of six, this, usually the game one and game three were all close for the most part. It was the, the middle game that seemed to be the difference. You look at the middle game when they were in Montgomery back in April, and Alabama State won that one 10 to one. And then later on in May, they won 11 to five. The other games, the two of them, as a matter of fact, in Tallahassee, went into extra innings. One in 14, the other one in 12. Well, that regular season, this is a little different animal here. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A <laughs> little bit. Yeah. Coach Shoup coming out to the mound, and of course he talked a little bit about, early when I spoke with him, about coming in from Florida State when he took the job at Florida A&M, and obviously looked at the differences in resources, and knows you know knows Mervo Melendez who was the coach at that time with Alabama State very well and said my biggest thing now to do is to try to create a, a budget and create a culture like at Alabama State Charles we you had a chance to talk to those coaches as well yeah I tell you what I talked with coach Shupa uh, he's uh, really uh, proud of his program and where they are uh, you know one of the things that he's really talking about is you know Baseball is real simple. It comes down to pitching, hitting the defense. You do three of the three, you're going to win. You do two of the three, you got a chance. You do none of the three, and then there are no post-game interviews. So he <laughs> really, really enjoys uh, what he's doing with his Florida a and program. Here's a pitch, and this one gets away from the catcher. You know, Santori, I, uh, <laughs> I turned down the Florida A&M job in 1981. It was offered to me. Really? Yeah, by Walter Reed, who was a then AD. He knew me from my best basketball days when he was AD at Jackson State. And he offered me the job. And I was going to take the job had they paid for me to move. $5,000 they didn't put up front for me to move and cost, cost me to stay at Southern. And the rest they say is, is history. Yeah, I would say it's history because... Yeah. Uh, I went on to, uh, I said eight, I, I, meant, I meant 91, 90. I went on to win eight of the next 10 championships in, in the swag. So I went on the roll after that. Not a bad decision. Not a bad decision to stay. Uh, but I like what I saw at Florida a in Tallahassee at the time. I was thinking I could really do something big there. A walk here for... Corey King and now Christian Lopez coming up to bat. The junior from San Diego. This pitch in there for strike. It's amazing how people's career and life change by the decision they did make. Right. That's right. <laughs> Coach, you Kenner, know. Coach Kenner, let me ask this question in terms of the talent uh, in the state of Florida and the talent in the state of Louisiana. Would it have made a difference? Yeah, Florida had more junior college and a bigger state. We got 4 million people in the state of Louisiana. Florida's got 15, 16 million, and they play a lot, have a lot of junior college. So I was looking at where Louisiana only had two junior college teams at the time. So I was looking at it from that aspect uh, that I had a chance to really do something good there. And Lopez grounds out to the pitcher to retire. Alabama State, but not before, a couple of runs. So two runs. Two hits, no errors, and two men left on. We'll take this timeout. Two nothing, Hornets. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look, to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way.
And you see some of the fans enjoying the sights and sounds here at Russ Chandler Stadium. Some of the Grambling fans there. Of course, uh, the Tigers will be playing a little bit later on. And there you see some of the Hornet fans enjoying today's ball game. Two to nothing, our score. Hornets on top. And Rivera will deliver the first pitch to the outside. We were talking about some of the scores from the games, and it is, it's, and it's an interesting dynamic because when you look at some of the, the rotations, the starters, always the middle starters seem to be the ones that had the most problems here. Yes. And so this is game two for Florida A&M, and you wonder if you'll see some of the same thing. But because it is the tournament, did you switch up the rotation a little bit because it is the tournament? It depends. It depends. Shot down since, the right field line. Five. I'm going to think since Coach Vasquez knows FAMU because they play in his division, he's pretty comfortable going with his number two because he's got a history with them. You mm -hmm. got me? They're able to get, when you're able to, to get data, and that's what everything is driven by nowadays, data. They pull, the sh pull up the data. What does the data say? Mm -hmm. And then you, go, you base it upon that. Outside for ball two, ball two, ball three, rather. I tell you, I never. Let me tell you what I look for in pitches. When I had to face pitches, I looked at in and pitch. Fouled off. Strikeout walks. Mm -hmm. That was important to me. Earned runs. How many they gave up? So uh, that gave me an idea. When I was looking at hitters, I looked at not necessarily average, but hit. And RBIs, mm -hmm. or if they had power, then you obviously you want to consider that. A walk here for Perini. Hader Moda now coming up to the plate here for Alabama, for I should say Florida A&M, who comes into the game 25 and 27 overall. Alabama State 40 and 16. The Hornets. 40 wins this season. First Hornet baseball team to get 40 wins in a season. That's Pretty saying impressive. something. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a shot, a hard shot, and coming up with it hard for Alabama State is Flores, and he tosses over to King for the out. You Good. know, every, it seems like every time a team scores, the pitcher either goes out when they go in the field, walk the, the lead off hit or give up a hit. And that's not a good formula for success. Now, Alabama State is a little different because they've got a lot of firepower, but you don't want to see them walking people. Pitch hitting the inside part of the plate for a strike. The game is so different now because there is more filming that goes on to the, in, during the game. You know, what is the pitcher doing? You know, right. how is he setting? And, you know, there's so much more now that coaches can do to not only recruit, not only scout other teams, but just look at the dynamics and the techniques of their own players. Oh, yeah. They've got everything broken down. The film room, they can break it down. And uh, that's the beautiful thing. Now, because our kids today are more... Technologically savvy. Yeah, that, the electronic... That everything is electronic on them. They look at it. Video is a big thing. They, they'd rather look at that than you talk to them about it because they can analyze it themselves, what they're doing. This shot in the left center field. This one's going back, and it is going to drop in left center field. Coming around is Perini, and going in for a triple is Will Brown. Tell you that was a really good hit. He hit it in the sweet spot, right between the right left fielder and the center fielder. Almost a good catch out there, but out of his reach. Coach, I wanted to ask: Do you think he could have made that catch? Did he take a bad angle to the ball? Well, you know the outfielders are not the most uh, graceful people because everybody have told me they had problems in left and right field. So I think a better angle would have been the key to getting it. But they are there for their bet, Charles. <laughs> their bet is the reason they're there. 
Jalen Miles hitting this one into right field, and it will drop into the hands. Ooh, good throw. Of Le LeBred, and a throw home, and he got oh, the my player goodness. at home, Will Brown, trying to get a little bit self, get a little bit greedy, and he's thrown out at the plate. Oh, this is beautiful. Deep shot in the right. And what a throw by LaPred. I mean, it was on a rope right into the hands of Jamal George to get the out. That's wow. the way to do it. Two to one, our score here at the 2023 SWAT Baseball Championship back after this. That was a seed. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Hydration dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. Back at McNeese Ballpark, baseball park here in Atlanta, Georgia, on the campus of Georgia Tech University. Two to one, the count. Hornets out in front. Fouled off at the plate for Alabama State. Trenton Jamison, the designated hitter. Here's a shot. Just in the right center for a base hit, and Jamison getting on the bags. He really lost yeah. his footing there. Well, he was aggressively making that turn. That's what I want to see. Because if there's any fumble by the outfielders, you can take an extra base. So we'll see him right here. Hitting the ball, going to shooting it through there. He's not over running fast. He just, he just slipped there. Yeah, the dirt gave. Okay. And here's a bunt thrown oh, throw oh. to second, or to the shortstop, and he gets him out at second base. Pitcher took a chance there. See, he had to throw it freeze because the ball was in the air, so the pitcher knew that, and it gave him a chance to make the throw to second. That's so gonna be a force out to second, one to six on the out. Coach Vasquez knows that it's important to score runs, so he was trying to manufacture something, play a little small ball there. So a base hit for Jamal George. Randy Flores from Brooklyn, New York. Came a long ways from home. Yeah, that's a little around, around the corner from Brooklyn to Montgomery. <laughs> and therefore a strike. But campus of Alabama State, just really beautiful, brand new. Yeah. Ballpark still relatively new. Yeah. Coach Vasquez said, you know, really credits the administration for getting behind the program, giving, getting them the support that they have really needed in order to make things happen. And this one being chased down, and it is out of play over the left field foul gate area, I guess you could say, over by the bullpen. And it's, you know, it's, and at some point, all of the universities got to step up and 
and uh, and, and support their their athletic programs. That's where that's the window that people see the university through. You know. There's no question that this team has really turned things around. This one's going to be thrown, and he is going to get caught stealing at second. And so Jamal George is nailed at second. Great throw. Yeah, people had a lot to cheer about this for. Ty Hanchi with a tremendous throw, getting it to Jalen Jalen Niles. And here's a shot to second baseman for Eni. And retires Kyler McIntosh. So no runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. Going to the top of the third inning. Two to one our score. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Hydration dropping. <laughs> Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. Florida A&M coming to the plate as we go to the top of the third inning and you see fans enjoying the ball game behind the Florida A&M dugout. And Rattler is making a little bit of a statement on defense and it's one of the keys to this game is they have to have good defense and here's another key, you gotta have good bats. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Ty Jackson up to the plate going to the top of the lineup here for Florida A&M. Jackson, Hanchi, and Weber will make plate appearances. This one fouled off. Ty Jackson hitting nearly 390 on the season. They have high bad average. Oh yeah, three actually coming into the ball game. Three 366 coming in the ball game. When you look at uh, Ty, Ty Jackson, he's played in all 42 games. Okay. And started in all 42. 24 RBI, three home runs. Most important thing is he's pretty good at the plate. 59 hits this season, leads the lineup with 59 hits. And that's what you want your leadoff yes. guy to do, is get on base. Yeah, and he's got a good crowd. Here's a shot, make that 60 hits. Ty Jackson aboard here in the top of the third inning. Right back up the middle. Now Ty Hanchi coming to the plate. Ty Hanchi hitting 371. There's a bunt, and boy, popped it in the air. Should have dropped it, he could have gotten two. 
It sounds easy sitting up here, huh? Well, I tell you, you know, I could not do what they do down there. That's why I'm <laughs> in the broadcast booth. But you see, the, he had the runner froze that second. The run is not, you know, you could have let it, got it to the ground, and then throw the first, and then they got the guy at first, can't get the second. So that was something we would practice periodically, just so kids would have an idea. It might occur in the game, you know what I'm saying? We saw in that last game how important bunting is, <laughs> is in the contest. Uh, that, you know, could have been one of those things that could have changed things around a little bit, but uh, bunting so important in yeah. the ball game. And it's a lost art because they don't practice it much in high school anymore. Everybody want to hit. And certainly travel ball, they don't bunt. You got me? Everybody want to hit. i tell you what, though. It is a great strategy because sometimes people are looking at Bunny up. Well, you may not get on base, and I think sometimes it's the distraction uh -huh. to make the pitcher have to decide where to go with the ball. And you're asking him to do something he doesn't rarely, he rarely does. Make a defensive decision. Yes, yeah. yes. You see, Coach. Omar Johnson from Jackson State really used the bunt to his advantage mm -hmm. because you saw a couple of times last night and even in the game that they had against Bethune, although in a losing effort, really playing with the mind of the pitcher to make him have mm -hmm. to decide, do I want to go to first, second, do I want to go to third? And it starts to play with the mind a little bit. That's right. You have to make a decision. Oh, no, it does play on the mind. Jan Michael Bastardo coming to the plate. He is the designated hitter. That pitch inside. Two on our score, Hornets on top. Here's a shot. Good drop in between the shortstop and center, and it does. And a great job by the outfield holding the runner at third base. Jackson, I don't know if Jackson would have went if he would have been able to get the run. That would have been close. Well, let's try to look at it and break it down here. Santoria. First, you got to read the outfielder. He's nowhere going to catch that ball. Okay, so now you get to third. Oh, you looking down. Now he can't pick it up. Now <laughs> he was indecided. Let's see. And by the time he picked the ball up, the runner was just like, I'll just stay right here. Yeah, so yeah. now at third base, Ty Jackson, Weber is at second. I believe he's going to be at third. And a meeting at the mound. Well, the base is loaded right now yep. with one out. And I can see where uh, Vasquez is sending people to the bullpen. That's smart on yeah. his part, too. Let's not play around here. You know, we don't know what we're going to get with this freshman. Hadn't been in this type of situation before. to the plate for Florida A&M. Greco, when he came up the first time in the ballgame, in the first inning, grounded out to the second baseman. Bases loaded. Up and in. Yeah.
He's got another lefty one, man. He's got a bunch of lefties in the bullpen. Got plenty of arms. Fouled yeah. off. And there's something you really don't have to worry about is arms for Alabama State. You would think you would. Let me put it that way. Right. Again, it's a little different tournament play. That one down the first baseline foul. You know, when you take a look at baseball, everybody has a job. Even you know, the folks on the in the dugout have a job. Managers have a job. Players who aren't playing have a job. Everybody mm -hmm. has a role in the in the dugout. Right. It's kind of like a blue collar team. Yeah, it is. You know, even the trainers have a job. Here's a shot in the right field, and this one's going to drop into the hands. And it's going to be a run score for Florida A&M. You know, I'm looking now. Why didn't the man that second tag up? It was no out. The ball is almost caught on the warning track, and he's still standing on second base. See, again, he should have been at third with one out where a ground ball could score him. Now he's going to take a hit on error to get him in. Yesterday in that nine to win against Texas Southern University, Perini was uh, 0 for 4 at the plate, but did walk. And uh, when he was up to the plate, he left three on the bags. As a matter of fact, for Florida a &M, yesterday against Texas Southern, they left 13 men on base. Wow. Normally, you leave that many men on base, you don't win games. That's right. Coach, I'm often curious, when you have a deep fly ball that's on the warning track, especially in right field, why don't you see the runner on first attempt to tag up as well? Well, that's a the right fielder does have a good arm, and the runner better be able to run. But it's inexcusable for the run on second not to tag and go to third base. You got me? Inexcusable. It's one of those intangibles you may not see on the uh, score sheet, but something that could come back to haunt you later on in the game. Yeah, yeah. Here's a pitch. This one swung on. See if he was on third base. Field. Well, there was two outs. Ooh. Oh, they ran into each other, and they get the uh, – out okay. to retire Alabama State. I want to. I, I thought it was one out, so it didn't matter if they got. It does matter, but we'll talk about it later. All right. So for Florida A and M, two to two is the score as they pick up one here in the top of the third inning. Jackson getting a run. We'll take this time out. We'll be right back. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Back here, bottom of the third inning with a tie ball game between the Rattlers and the Hornets. And now coming to the plate for Alabama State will be Kyler McIntosh. McIntosh, Matos, and Jack Hay will be up to the plate. Granger on the mound for Florida A&M.
Count is even at one and one. Just missing outside. Tell you what, the Florida a and Rattlers. Oh, right up the middle. Offensively, but the deep, but as far as Alabama State, they're right on par, and Jack Hay gets on base. Jack, that's Kyler McIntosh, rather. And so McIntosh leads things off with a single. Matos now will come to the plate. Nice swing, even swing, coach. Yeah, and I tell you, it's amazing when you're, you're used to playing teams a team from your division. Hi, it's sometimes it's tough to, to just take care of them. You know, uh, when I say take care of them, Florida, Florida A&M, and, and there is a slight difference between them and Alabama State. I think Alabama State does have a little more talent from position to position, but Alabama State hadn't proven they can separate them in the first three innings. So we'll see what happens. Coach Valdez says that uh, Florida a is an extremely good team with excellent hitters. And when you talk about guys that were players of the week, Hunter, you say Weber, Perini, Postardo, Greco, all players of the week in the Southwestern Athletic Conference during the course of the season, all had extremely great weeks hitting the baseball. Mm -hmm. Here's a pitch. Swung on and hit deep in the left field. This one is going to come down and underneath it, the left fielder, Jack Hay. I should say the left fielder, Will Brown on the catch. Now Jack Hay coming to the plate. He can make some hair here if he wants. Yeah, he had a good day yesterday. But yesterday's history. We got to have it today. Today's when they need to make it hit. Here's a pitch. Good pitch by Granger. That misses for a ball. Oh. The key for Florida A&M is to try to get their starters seven innings or more. Ooh. That'd be great. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, Veets got seven innings, gave up five hits at five strikeouts. So if uh, Granger can get into seven innings without a lot of problems, They'd be in good shape, and that pitch in there for a strike. I'd be asking a lot today. Yeah, you know, it's a different monster today with Alabama State. They yeah. are an offensive juggernaut. Yeah. Here's a shot back up the middle. Nice stab by the shortstop, Niles. What a defensive play by Florida a and Yes, it's big lead. Big lead. We'll take a look at the replay. Yeah. Right off, looked like right off the mound or the foot of the pitcher. Yeah. And had the presence of mind to not rush and just take the out. Just a great stab and just a little toss, nice little throw. Yeah, the president of mine. Here's a shot into left center field. This one's going back, and it will be caught at the warning track by the center fielder, Ty Jackson. Two to two, our score between the Rattlers and the Hornets back after this.
Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have a new pitcher in the ball game. As you see, some of the fans enjoying the ball game from way up high. And pitching now for Alabama State is Jordan LeBoy. And so he's on the mound here in the fourth inning. So new pitcher for Alabama State. Well, coach got three innings, and he figured this is my chance to go somewhere else because I'm loaded in the bullpen. Charles, I know you had a question for coach. Yeah, coach, I wanted to ask you, uh, when you have these web jams, what does it do for the confidence of a pitcher? The web jam? Yeah, you, you had a, we had some uh, some standout defensive plays early. We had a, a oh, nice web, play web from, jam. From, from right field. We had to play in the hole there from the family shortstop. But what does that do for the confidence of, uh, of the pitcher? Well, it, it gives them the confidence that they can throw strikes. They don't have to pitch a run. Throw a strike, my defense is going to pick me up. Good pitch. So LaBoy coming into the ball game, and here is a shot into left field, and getting under the ball is Jack Hay. And he catches it in foul territory. And now Will Brown coming to the plate. Will Brown got caught stealing home in the last in, in the second inning. Well, on the fly ball. We're not going to call it a caught stealing. We're going to say he was thrown out on the fly ball. We'll call it that thing. Yeah, that's what yeah. it's really. The, that's the correct te te uh, terminology. And here's a swing and a miss. LaVoy, a 4.96 ERA. He's 2-3 and three on the season, 23 appearances. He's got four saves for Alabama State. That's Swung it. on, missed, strike three. And two away now here in the fourth inning. You, you notice how, uh, uh, Santoria, how good the game moves when the strikes are being thrown. You know what I'm saying? Good Absolutely. defensive plays are being made. Here's a shot in the right center field, base hits. This kid that really played well. Jalen Yes. You know, I sort of liked him last year. He was weak, and I liked him last year. And I mentioned to his daddy, he might, if he gets stronger, he might be a good player, you know? He was two for four yesterday. I should say he was yeah, two for four yesterday. Mm -hmm. Was able to get a couple of hits, and now a hit here, and he's got a great defensive play in the books that could go into a tournament reel. That you went know, outside. You know, the thing is, I talked with one of the coaches, and they weren't very high with, on him. And I said, man, that kid got a chance. He's just weak. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now he's gotten a stronger, his body. Just think when he gets even stronger. You know. That one was just missing for a ball. Coaches sometimes don't want to wait on 17 and 18 year old bodies oh, yeah. to catch up. <laughs> they want it now. Well, you're not going to get all of them now. You know. Here's a throw to first base. I've had many conversations with Dusty Baker. He's a personal friend of mine. Dusty Baker says to me, what people have to understand about black athletes, the 17, 18, 19-year-old black athlete, because of nutrition, most of them ain't going to be what they're going to be until they get in to be 20, 21, mm -hmm. and they can get stronger. You got me? Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question about that here in just a second. Here's the pitch. Missing for a ball. And now there are Rattlers at first and second. Ty Hanchi coming to the plate. 
you talk about nutrition and the how you eat as a baseball player. We know there's teams eat different ways, baseball, mm-hmm. basketball, football. When you look at nutrition, what does that, that look like for players? And this one goes again to right field. Nice stab by the second baseman, Flores. <laughs> oh, what a ball. What a play. Wow. We having Jim Webb. Webb Jim. Webb Jim. Webb Jim. <laughs> Webb Jim. All over the place. Look at here. Send this one in. And they're going to have a little discussion about this. They're waving the players back on the field. They are reviewing this. And let's take a look at this play. Nice shot. And you see Flores making the stop. And then the throw over to Corey King. He's out. They're not going to overturn it. Let's see. They're not going to overturn it. Yeah, he got him. Yeah, it looks like he's out by half a step. Yeah, they're not going to. And it has to be basically irrefutable evidence. That's right. Yeah. And they're seeing the same thing we're looking at. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to be a, uh, looks like it's going to be an out at least. Yeah. A web jam. There you go. There you see the the ball coming into the hands of Corey King, the first baseman. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be an out. Yeah. Oh, great work by our camera. Oh, folks. do it, James Crenshaw, the producer. He's giving it to him. And he's giving them the out. We'll see what happens here as the officials continue to talk about this and review this. Right now, two to two is our score. And just awaiting to see what the call will be. And here come the officials. We already know it. It's going to be an out. Yeah. Yeah. The great thing about review is you can go back and you get it right. Yeah, get yeah. it right, right. So that is going to be a ground out to the second baseman to retire Florida A&M. And for the Rattlers, no runs, one hit, no errors, two men left. Two to two, our score. We'll take this time out back after this from Atlanta. Back here in Atlanta, the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. First pitch in there for a strike. Corey King up to the plate. 
Corey King in yesterday's game. They would score a couple of runs, a couple of hits in the ball game as well. This one fouled off. Junior from Lithonia, Georgia. You know, you see the jubilation of players when they're able to move on. And earlier today, we saw a couple of teams eliminated. This one to the shortstop. Nice throw by Jalen Niles for the first out. We want to remind you, we're going to ask about the nutrition. Yeah, nutrition. When you start looking at the nutrition and what baseball players have to do, you know, food-wise, because things are a little different, what do you tell players about how they fuel their bodies? How they what? How they fuel their bodies, how they eat. Yeah. Well, you know, you want to tell them first, you want to try to eat a breakfast every morning because that's your most important meal. And you want to stay away from a lot of the sweets and, uh, and the fatty food. And, you know, you eat a lot of protein and the vegetables, mm -hmm. the, the different color of vegetables, all of that is very good. But that is difficult for, for a, a, a kid who is an athlete from a poor family. Mm -hmm. He's got to eat what, the, what he can eat. What your mama cooks you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If she cooks, mm -hmm. you know, because she may be working. But we try to tell them to stay away from the fast food as much as possible. Yeah. And, uh, and just try to stay away from all of the sweet that is because that's what's break the muscle and bones down is the sugar. Right. Sugar is really like salt. It's really tough on the body, you know. So what, you, what you're saying is I need to quit eating so many cookies. That's what you're saying. <laughs> cookies and donuts are hurting me is what you're saying. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is a walk by Christ, Christian you Lopez. You said that. <laughs> That was pretty good, Centauri. <laughs> well, my goal is to get in better shape, not be in oval shape. That's right. <laughs> and I've worked at it. Swung on, miss. Good pitch. I eliminate sugar. I do honey. About 15 years ago, I just eliminated Really? Sugar. Yeah. I only do honey, no sugar. Certainly don't do the synthetic sugar. Sweet low in there. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Yeah. Here's the throw back to first, not in time. We talk about a heads-up play by Ty Hanchi. Nearly catches the runners coming back to first. Look at that throw. Yeah, Hanchi is a pretty good catcher. This pitcher has settled down and made this game interesting. Absolutely. Outside. And I'm convinced if a pitcher has a good catcher, it can make a world of difference in his confidence. Oh, no question. Make, he can make the get, pitcher believe. Here's a pitch. Check swing, comes back to the pitcher. Ooh. Got Whoa. him off the bag, and no one is going to be out. Well, he gets to one right second. He did tag him. He lucky they didn't call a double play. He didn't slide, did he? Let's see, did he slide? Goes right to the pitcher, and we talked about that earlier. You got to make a decision. Yeah, the pitcher didn't. What happened? He got both of those guys going over there. Uh, no, he tagged the bag. <laughs> he did a Fred Astaire, <laughs> but he, he did tag the bag. Oh, for the people listening, James Brown. <laughs> ben Hines. <laughs> oh, Kenny Hines, whatever. Still tied here in the bottom of the fourth. Swan miss. Go back to what we were saying earlier, Coach Shoup stating you can get the starter in the seven innings. You got a shot. Right now we're at the bottom of the four. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. outside. 
And if this pitcher get, start getting Alabama State to be overly aggressive, then they're playing into his hand because I notice he's throwing more and more off-speed pitches. So if you get aggressive, that's what he wants. Look at that. You know, he's he's going to – that's what he's going to get you out. So you want to be aggressive, I'm going to throw you something off the plate. Well, this pitcher not afraid of throwing it over the plate either. No. Jamal George, the freshman from Puerto Rico. Here's the throw. Swung on and hit to third baseman. He tosses it over to Perini, and that ends Alabama State's half of the fourth inning. So we go to the top of the fifth inning with the score. Tied it too. Back after this. Jared Weber coming back to the plate now as we get ready for the top of the fifth inning. And let's go down on the field to Charles Bishop, who is with Coach Shoup. Coach Shoup, uh, Caleb Granger, uh, gave up a couple of runs early, but he's really settled into this game. Yes, I think he went out a little bit nervous. Expected his first. Uh, he's a good pick. A good ball game. You got two good teams. The last three of the last two, uh, two of the last three played. One was 14 and 12. So it's, it's going to be a close. Into the team that executes is going to win. You mentioned on your three prongs of success, pitching, defense, and hitting. So far, you've got the pitching and the defense. Has some, a couple of real good web games. Yeah, that's so far, but, you know, there's a lot of baseball yet to be played. So we got to keep doing what we do. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Double there. Help. Yeah, just excited to be here. Two good teams. Uh, two well, uh, they're well coached. And Jose, I've known him for a long time. So it's going to be a good ball game. So buckle in. Let's go. Sure thing. Thank you, Coach. Jared Weber with a base hit. This is what happened when you put a person in for the bat. Defensively in a tight game, they come back. This is where he didn't make hay on that one. That was a ball he should have caught easy. But, yeah, you know, he's in that for his bat. And now, Jan Michael Bastardo at the plate. I want to give a shout out to two young men uh, Jamar George and Ricardo Rivera. They're both kids from Puerto Rico, the International Baseball School in Puerto Rico. Uh, I want to give a shout out to them because they produce a lot of really good baseball players. And that coach is Luis Castillo. Or Luis Castro, I'm sorry. Luis Castro is the coach over there at the International Baseball School in Puerto Rico. 
You've been there a few times, haven't you? Been there a few times. Done that. Nice pitch in there for a strike. My first trip into P Puerto Rico produced a major league player, Jose De Leon. My yeah. very first player I signed out of there. And then the second one is uh, Victor Caratina. Here's a shot over the left field wall. It is going to be foul. This one fouled off behind the grandstand. He was right on that pitch, fouled it straight back. Bastardo, behind in the count. Here's a pitch, swung on and hit in the right field, base hit. Coming around is Jared Weber to third, he's gonna stay there. Starter with a great hit. And you know, look, the, these two teams have teed off on each other quite a bit this year. So as far as hitting, both of these teams are extremely good. Yeah, right now, I sort the of like what FAMU is doing because they're the aggressor. And uh, and Alabama State pitcher doesn't have anything right now with this lefty that can get them out with. This one back over the third base, or I should say uh, behind the dugout, rather, the Alabama State dugout. See, they got to show me they can get them out with an off-speed pitch or curveball. We know the fastball is just so-so, so now what can he get him out with? Greco up to the plate now for Florida a and and this one called a strike. And the fans from FAMU do not like that call. He's still got a strike left. So let's see what he can throw him. If he's trying to give them something off the plate. 0-2 pitch, swung on foul. Day two of the tournament here in Atlanta, Georgia. We've had two really beautiful days here. Swung on and missed. Of course, tomorrow, day three, will be a little different because although you'll have four games, the winners of the first two games will have to play again that day for the potential to push to a Saturday showdown. That's true. If neither team beats teams that are undefeated going into Friday, there will be no game Saturday, and we'll have a championship game on Sunday, which is all or nothing. There is no best of three or anything like that <laughs> in the championship game. You either win or you go home. <laughs> win or go home, huh? That's it. See, can you put him up, put him away with something? Close. See, that's the thing. He doesn't have 
a pitch he can put him away with, and that's what I've been looking at to see. Because it comes down, if you don't get him to put your fastball in play where they can't hurt you, you got to be able to do something with another pitch that's can, that can get him out. Now he's going to try and go in on him. This one fouled off. He's hanging in there. Yeah, he did, brought, brought it in. And that's what you love to see young hitters do is be able to hang in there at the plate. Uh-huh. Going back outside. Swung on and hit to first baseman. This will be fouled. Yeah, it's tough when you can't put them away. Yeah. Because, you know, a good hitter is going to hang you in hang there. Hang in there. Yeah. You're going to file off your best pitches. Does a long at bat, does that favor the hitter or the pitcher more? The hitter. Say? Yeah. Because you get to read and see whatever he's got to feature, he's already featured it. Here is the pitch by LaBoy. There it is. No. Now the count is full with nobody out. We tricked him. That was a good one. And the fans thought so too, coach. <laughs> yeah. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit to the second baseman. Oh, he threw it away. That's going to be an E4. And now the Rattlers have two aboard. And score the run. So now Florida A&M takes a three to two lead. And nobody's out. Weber comes in. Uh, he kept fouling pitches off, fouling them off. Runners at the corners now. As Greco Eat reaches on an E4. Of course, Alabama AM is not concerned being one run down. Or even two if they get down. They're not going to be. Yes, sir. Shot in the left field. Coming in the score is Bastardo. And it's now a 4 to 2 ball game. Now they're going to probably bunt here. And here comes Coach Vasquez. You and see, when you th the thing is, when you think you got a lot of pitches and you run into a situation where the team that don't have a lot, pitcher end up pitching a gym against you, it really creates problems. Coach Vasquez out here talking to LeBoy, and of course, right now, don't see any action no here in the bullpen. No action. Well, if you are Alabama State, you look at where you are right now here in this ballgame, down four to two, you just got to kind of settle down here. Yeah. And, you know, coming into this game, you know, talking to Coach Vasquez, he said this is one of the best hitting teams in the conference. Yeah. So where they may not be deep in some areas, hitting the ball is not a weakness. <laughs> right, exactly. And the thing is, this pitcher, the ball should have been caught in right in left field. The ball should have been uh, out at second. So he's had, you know, it, it hadn't been all his fault. Yeah. Because they hadn't hit all the, that last ball hit solid on him. And there was the error that was by That's the second I'm baseman, about, yeah. yeah. And here's a bunt, comes straight back. Watch and, out! Just a couple of feet from James, who James. is our producer. <laughs> I never thought the ball could get in there. Well, it didn't. That one almost did. <laughs> it didn't, though. <laughs> almost caught Count only in Horseshoe. <laughs> oh, close. Here's a punt. Oh, got third. Oh! And he has nowhere to go with the ball. LaBoy yeah. couldn't go anywhere. 
He slips as he tried to field the ball and throw it. And going into first base, Hader Mota. You remember we talked about you have to be under control to come and field the ball? Classic case, we talked about being under control. You talk about a disaster situation here. Yeah, that's a base hit. Yeah. Missing. Ooh, that was a good looking pitch. Four runs, 10 hits for Florida A&M. Alabama State, two runs off of four hits, one air. Now, the only thing that you can say is for FAMU, although they're in the lead, a lot of hits in the ball game. They've left quite a few on the bags as they did yesterday. Yeah. But right now, they're in the lead, and that's the only thing that matters. Here is the pitch. Low. The boy misses. And the boy behind in the count. Now there's action in the Alabama State bullpen. That pitch in there for a strike. They got a righty pitch at Troy. We'll see who's in the bullpen here in just a second. I'm going to try to see his number. Swung on and missed. Like wow. 28. Like that. This is 28. Yeah, 28. Jihan. Luis Whoa. Rodriguez is pitching yeah. or he's warming up in the bullpen. That's 28. Here's a oh. shot to left field. Another base hit. Two runs may score. One is in. Here's a throw. It is out. In time for the out. But that's only the first out of the inning. Right. Great shot in the left field. And a really good throw by Jack Hay. Hits the cutoff man in Christian Lopez. And then to Jamal George. But another run scores, and it's 5-2. Seven five two on that throw out. Here's a shot. Looks like that the Shortstop for Alabama State. Infield fly rule on that. McIntosh gets the catch. And people ask, what is an infield fly rule? Well, it's, it is something that the infielders about pop up that they're going to catch, and it has to be run on first and second. And that's when the infield fly rule comes into play. More education. This is what we're here for. I just tell what happens, you just, you do the education. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around a little longer than you about the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, third base, got him. Hesitated, got him. And he gets him out at third base. Well, defensively, Alabama State stops the bleeding. A couple <laughs> of good throws. And that retires. Three runs, five hits, one air, one man left. We now go to bottom of the fifth. It is FAMU five and Alabama State two back after this.
We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. 5G boss mode activate. Smile, you're on Cricket. Back here in Atlanta, Georgia, the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. Fans enjoying themselves on what has been a great day here in Atlanta. Game three of day two here at the tournament, and it's a good one, 5-2. Florida A&M on top as we enter into the bottom of the fifth inning. We want to watch now, they had a long inning. Pitcher was sitting in that dugout. Let's see what happens. Always a, a issue when they sit a long time in the dugout. And here is a shot into center field. It will be caught by Ty Jackson, and that's the first out of the inning. Kyler McIntosh up to the plates. One out here for Alabama State. And now if you're Alabama State here in the bottom of the third inning, or bottom of the fifth inning, you know, your biggest thing is just got to settle down here and you're not going to get it all back in one swing. Or two swings. Coming up next half of the inning, we'll talk with Coach Jose Vasquez. This goes right back to the pitcher, Granger. And we've got two outs. Matos will now come to the plate. In there for a strike. This one's fouled off. That one, you gotta watch those. You know, talking to the coaches before the game, they said two things really are, this is where the difference is, and that is concentration and attention to detail really will separate you in the tournament. Oh, it does. You gotta be really focused, stay focused, man, and not take anything for granted. Pitch to the outside for a ball. Florida a &M with the lead after a three-run fifth inning. Here's a shot into right field. This one's going to drop for a base hit. There you go, the there you go. Is Matos, and ball was thrown away, but Matos will stay where he is at second base. He was on his horses when he uh, hit that ball, and that allowed him to go to second base. Yeah. Now, Jack has got to make hay right here. I pick you to click. Jack Hay coming up. There you see his stats there. Solid hitter for Coach Vasquez in Alabama State.
You know what I like most about this pitcher? He knows he can't blow you away, and he's not trying to. That's right. I mean, and I see kids trying to overthrow, and he's just out there pitching, throwing to location, changing speed periodically to get him to make put the ball in play. Outside for a ball, not forcing it. Not That's, forcing it, you yeah. know. He knows he's not going to be able to throw the ball by anyone. But he's trying to hit locations and forcing them to f go on a fishing expedition. See that pitch on the outside corner, can't do a lot with it. Fouled off. Fifth inning. The winner of this game We'll move on to the winner's bracket, which means that whoever loses this game will have to win twice to get to Saturday tomorrow. To get to Saturday? Yeah, because you got to win. I should say you got to win. You win twice to get to Sunday, in other words. You're going to have Sunday. to win on Friday. Sunday, I should say. Yeah. You got to win on Saturday or Friday. You got to win tomorrow, but you got to play two tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, don't two. You? Yeah. yeah. We gotta win two to get to Saturday. And then if you win Saturday, you get to Sunday. But you got a long track if you lose. Here's a pitch. You know, I've been there before. I came out of the loser's bracket several times. But we had the numbers, the pitchers, and the the right temperament of players, you know, to deal with the adversity. The loser plays tomorrow at 9 a.m. against Preview A&M. Here's a shot. Does this one get, yeah, it does get, in, get just to the right of the second baseman. And a run scores for Alabama State. Coming in and getting the run, Ian Matos. That's a big run to pick up. Get it with two outs. Jack made hay by putting the ball in play. Coach, you're spitting balls right now. There you go. Uh, Jack Hay put, put it in play. <laughs> yeah. Pitch to the inside, but right on the corner, right in the inner half of the plate for a strike. Five to three, our score. Three runs for FAMU in the top of the fifth inning. Shot fouled. Alabama State scored one here in this inning. So much easier to get. You know, you get went down two rather than three because you get one man on and you, you can hit one out and tie it up. So that's, that's why you want to keep the numbers low. Inside for a ball. You know, taking a look at Ty Hanchi, he's been in front of every ball that's fallen a little bit short for the most part, and that is a tough position to play being a catcher. Yeah. Here's a shot in the right center. This one's got some juice on it, and it will be caught. This one comes down to Jared Weber to retire Alabama State. For Alabama State base, we now go to the top of the sixth inning with the score. Alabama State trailing five to three. We'll take this time out from here in Atlanta. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. 
We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. There's some youngsters enjoying the game here today in Atlanta. Ty Jackson coming up to the plate for Alabama State. Top of the lineup. Nice pitch. Just missing for a ball. Five to three is our score. Let's go down to Charles Bishop, who has Coach Vasquez. Coach Vasquez, is always fun when you and Coach uh, Jamie shoot match. Wit, uh, another fun one today. Uh, ask me again. I'm sorry. I said it's always a fun one when you and Coach Jamie oh, shoot yeah. match. Wit's uh, going to be a, a, a been a fun one thus far. We know each other way too well. We played too many times this year, so it's a battle, and we knew we knew we were on a we knew it was going to be a battle. But you know that, that's that's what's happening, and we're going to continue to compete. I know they're going to continue to compete, so I expect to be a, a good game all the way through. Uh, this last half inning, you, you guys were able to get a scratch out a run uh, with two outs. How big was that? Yeah, you know what? We we just got to keep it close. At this point, we just got to do our best to continue to throw strikes and keep it close. They got a very good offense. They got some guys that can that can do some damage. So we just got to control and, and uh, like I said, try to keep uh, continue to throw strikes and, and uh, making plays for the for whoever's uh, pitching. And uh, let's see what we can do offensively when we come back this inning. Sure thing, Coach. Let's get back to it. All right, so Coach Vasquez, as he said, very familiar with this program. And when you are familiar with each other, mm -hmm. it does change the dynamic. We've seen a couple of games already today where teams have really not seen each other. Bethune, Cookman, mm -hmm. and Southern had never played before. Grambling hadn't played Jackson all year long, although familiar with them. Yeah. Hadn't played them this year. So you see those kinds of games during the tournament where teams don't face each other. Right. Here's a shot into left field. This one's going to drop into foul territory and not caught. But, man, look out as the left if fielder there, heard, Jack Hay, runs into the wall. We got a great story if he's hurt. It's a padded wall. Jack Hay, he had to run for it, and he runs right into it. Oof. It's a fist, too. His, leg, his uh, bottom part of his leg hit the... Uh, the concrete down there below the oh, pad. Oh, okay. I couldn't see. But he is okay and ready to go again. This one fouled off. <coughs> Hanchi's his, Hanchi has struggled at the plate today. He's 0 for 3. Here's a pitch. Got to get that down. You can't keep walking, people. You got to throw strikes. See, the pitcher can't put them away any kind. No matter where he throws, they're able to foul him off, foul him off, buy a better pitch. Patience is the key word. Yeah. I just got a text from a group of kids from the island of uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, wanting to say hello. Really? Yeah. That one just misses. They're in the international school, baseball school in Puerto Rico. A lot of them will be coming to play in the conference next year in the swag. So, hello, que pasa? Great for you guys to uh, be on with us. Ty Hanchi, nine home runs, maybe trying to get that tenth, and he's hit. Boy, and that fired him up. Well, it couldn't hurt him. He didn't throw that hard. It was a curveball. So it was not like he was. <laughs> 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 it, we know he wasn't throwing at him. 
and they know we couldn't hurt him. So either one of them. And this is where we really get to see if if teams really have the pitching they say that they have. You got That's me? That's right. Because now it's nitty gritty. You you got to come in and stop people. And that's going to be it for LeBoy. So we're going to have a pitching change and take this time out. When we come back, we'll give you the new pitcher for Alabama State. Five to three is our score. Top of the sixth inning here in Atlanta. Dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. New pitcher in the ball game for Southern, you know, I should say for Alabama State University is Luis Rodriguez. And here's Weber with a shot going right to, it's gonna be a foul it looks like. No, it's gonna be an out. Now Bastardo up to the plate. <coughs> so that one out in the inning. Oh, it touched the bag. He did. Okay. Double play. And that'll do it for Florida A&M. What, what is it going on? Right there, he got him at third, throws it over What first. is going on? That should be three. The umpire well, lost okay. it. Yeah, because they're trying to still figure out what happened to the runner here that originally went up there at first. The umpire messed that up because he didn't give the, he didn't, that's not the play we're talking about. It's the play at third base. Watch, watch, watch. Oh, he didn't touch the bag. Umpire should have, he, he's on the bag. There it is, it's, it's off the case. See, he should have given the signal, he did not. I think the coach, coach just told me that uh, he called a foul ball on that. But he never gave a signal. He didn't. Let's see if it was a foul ball. Foul, not a foul ball. It's not a foul ball. And that's not his call. It's the home plate call because he's in front of the bag. Any ball that's in front of the bag is the home plate 
umpire is a fair ball. That's the rule. Centurion, we, we got the review. review. They shouldn't, but it's a. If, and I think the, the 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 third base umpire did a good job. He didn't give a signal because it wasn't his call. Anything in front of the bag is not his call. When they're going for a review here. Well, we will uh, see what's going on here as they go for the review. You want to keep it right here? All right, so we'll keep it here and we'll see one more time. You'll pick the ball up. And he's got the ball there. It looks like it's in fair territory. He tosses it over to first. This is an easy call yeah. on the review because anything that's in front of the back. This should be an easy call. Say he's out at third and out at first. Yeah, it's an easy call. Well, that will do it for this half of the inning. Five to three, our score. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back here on the SWAC Digital Network. Corey King up to bat now for Alabama State as we enter into the bottom half of the sixth inning. Nice pitch that sails into the strike zone. Centauri, you were right about the coach trying to get seven. He's going into the sixth. <laughs> you know, that, that was the key is that if you can get him to get that, and that's going to be a foul ball. If you get him to seven, they said the key is then you have a much better chance of winning. Yes. Because now you can try to come in with your closer and you don't necessarily, and if you can get even more out of him, it's even better. Yeah. But you can't rest on your laurels because this is a good hitting team. No, you can't. You know, when Coach uh, Vasquez said that when Coach Shoup got the job at Florida A&M, he never big leagued him. You know, he really respects the fact that he didn't big leave him because he was at Florida State right, right. before he came into FAMU. And so always has appreciated the fact that he never big leagued him when he was a coach at Florida State. And they came here. to, yeah. And a lot of times people do try to big league people. Uh, it's, Base you know, in. 
And now Corey King with a base hit for Alabama State. Christian Lopez coming to the plate. And I think Coach Hugh also recognized that the conference do play quality baseball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and he even said, you know, my goal, he said his goal coming into Florida A&M was to get the program to what Alabama State has been doing. Right. See some of the Southern fans coming into the ball game. Yeah, they'll be in here. It's kind of like baseball by you classic coming up. Yeah. And with Graham, with them playing Graham, there's gonna be a big crowd tonight. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of you know, it sort of worked out pretty good that it's the feature game. If it won't start at six, it'll probably be more like 730. Yep. If we're lucky. If you're lucky and, you know, creek don't rise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we still in the six, a lot of action left. The first two games really pushed it back. This game has moved relatively well. Here's a pitch, swung on, miss. And I tell you what, Granger has really been on his P's and Q's. You can't try to pull this kid. He's, become, he's going to his off-speed pitch now. What I would do, I would be jamming the plate because he's going to mainly go outside because that's, that's where he's going to be mostly, mostly affected. And Foul that, off. And to overswing is playing into his hand. I believe that's just his second strikeout of Yeah, he's not going to strike people out. No. But if you overswing, you play into his hand. If you try to pull, you play it to his hand. You have to make him make a mistake to pull him. He's pitched five and a third so far. Three runs, all three earned. That one just missing. Trenton Jamison up to the plate. Jamison hitting 338 coming into the game today. There you got to hurt him. Oh, that's the one if you go hurt him. He made a mistake. There's one aboard for the Hornets. There's a pitch swung on, and this one is hit. Into left field. Going back on it. It's going to be Will Brown, and he makes the catch. I tell you what, there are some excited Florida A&M fans because <laughs> if they win, they don't play until tomorrow evening, and yeah. they'll get a chance to sit back and watch Alabama State play again, yes. and then they'll have to play against Prairie View A&M. Yeah. So, again, the team that wins here today will battle against Prairie View, or loses today, will battle against Prairie View, and one of those two teams will have to win two games tomorrow. Yeah. Basically three games in two days in order to get to the championship. Pitch misses. Meanwhile, the team that wins sit back, they'll sit back and watch and possibly only play one game. Here's a pitch, swung on and hit this one to the shortstop. Nice toss, what a play by Niles. Another big defensive play. Six to four on the put out. And that ends the Alabama State half of the sixth inning. We go to seven. Fam, you on top. Five to three. Back after this. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look, to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. 
That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Fans enjoying themselves right there in, by, beside the Chevrolet tent, which Chevrolet, a proud sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And Alabama State fans hoping that their team wins here today, and that way they do not have to come back early tomorrow. They can come back later in the evening. But yeah. the main thing for what both of these teams here is, none of these two teams have losses right now in the tournament, so they'll get another shot tomorrow even if they lose. Yeah. Two teams already have been eliminated, and that's Jackson State and Texas Southern. Well, Jackson State played two great games here in this tournament. And lost both. Both one-run games. And that, that's the heartbreaking thing is they were both one-run games. Yeah, yeah. You know, Santori, the thing is, uh, right now Florida State is looking at nine out. I like to when we get here, because you're counting out at this point. Yeah. You got, you're counting out. And you're looking at you just you just went through uh, the heart of the uh, the orders, so now you're at the bottom. You have the ninth hole hitter coming up, I think. And uh, so they want to really manage manage the the pitcher from here on out. Greco up to the plate. Florida a &M hitting to a double play to end their half of the sixth inning. And here's Greco with a shot straight up in the air. This one's going to get into foul territory. Will they be able to make a catch here? Yes. Did he drop it or did he catch it? He, he caught the ball. Him. Great catch there. Great catch by Christian Lopez who had to get on his horses, it looked like, to get that ball. He doesn't cover a lot of ground out there. Santori, that was Her. a tremendous catch because of the top spin that was on it. It was actually yeah. starting to come back toward the field of play. That's right. Good observation. Charles Bishop, third man of the team. Call him the Bishop of the SWAC. The Bishop of the SWAC. Yeah. He's been around the SWAC a couple Tuesdays and a few Sundays. That's right. <laughs> Swung on and missed. With football in particular. Oh, man, yeah. He's loving baseball. It's a little different spin. <laughs> loving it. <laughs> <laughs> the coaches on that is emotional. <laughs> you get the football coaches on that timeline. It's a little tough. You got 40,000 people screaming at them. Would you say that baseball coaches are a little bit more calmer than football oh, coaches? A lot more. Yeah. The pressure is different, you know. Everything is different. Yeah. Glad you could join us here on the SWAC Digital Network. Florida A&M trying to get to tomorrow afternoon and wait for the winner of the, if Alabama State loses the game, it would be Alabama State Prairie View. The winner would play FAM. Fam loses, it'll be Fam Prairie View. The winner would play Alabama State and have to beat them twice. Swung on and hit in between first and the second baseman. Hater Motor will come to the plate now. Kids are so different. So different how they 
how they just play the game, you know. Yeah, you were talking about that, and that's something Coach uh, Vasquez discussed, is that one of the hardest things for him is you want to be more than just their coach because yes. you want to help, you know, help them navigate life, not yes. just the game of yeah. baseball. Yeah. Nice shot right back at the pitcher. And that's Luis Rodriguez. Yeah. You got to help them nav navigate life yeah. because that's their biggest challenge. Well, it's a great shot right back at the pitcher. To the credit of that runner, you notice he got down. Yeah. Five runs, 12 hits, no errors for Florida A&M. Three runs, seven hits, one air for Alabama State. They don't make many airs. Ooh, that one's in, up and inside. Yeah, I thought it might, but he's, he wants to hit, so. <laughs> Oof. Swung on and missed on that one. Grambling Southern coming up next. That'll be the final game of the evening. Swung on and missed. I should say foul back. <laughs> we were talking about, I had a friend <laughs> just text me. Uh, uh, he said that baseball coaches are far more intense than football. When you get a bunch of ejection in football, <laughs> baseball play coaches. <laughs> Base hit in the left field. Uh, that's why he wanted to hit. He didn't want to get, he wanted to swing the bat. Well, Will Brown has been... Defensively, he has had a heck of a day. And now Jalen Niles will come up to the plate. Now 13 hits for FAMU. Pitching there for a strike. Both teams have two strikeouts. That one swung on and missed. What my friend didn't understand, they throw flags on football coaches yeah. and they eject baseball coaches. Yeah. That's the difference. So that's why they get thrown out more. They can't afford to throw a football coach out. Who's going to run the... F <laughs> yeah, you don't see that too often. No, you're not going to run them. No, you're not going to see that. Somebody got to manage them hundreds some kids you got on that side. <laughs> Now, you've been intense, but I haven't seen you throwing out of many games. Not many. Right back at the pitcher. And that retires Florida A&M. No runs. Two hits, no errors, two men left on base. We now go to the top of the set, to the bottom of the seventh. Looked like he'd going to the bullpen. And Alabama State trailing five to three. Back after this. Yep.
Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium, McNeese Ball Baseball Park here in Atlanta, Georgia. Man, we have had a great crowd all day today, and the crowd is just getting even thicker as we get ready for the nightcap between Grambling and Southern. We've already seen Southern fans and Grambling fans come on in, and it should be a fantastic evening crowd, and it's already been well attended. Yeah, the key is the closer is in the game now, so we have to see if he is the closer. Grant Harrison in the ball game now for Florida A&M. Just caught, talked to Coach Shoop in between innings. The big thing he said, Caleb Granger gave him great innings. Not only did he give him great innings, but he saved his bullpen. So now you see both teams going to their closer. Yeah, and Grant Harrison leads the team in saves. 5-3-5 five, three, five, ERA, three saves on the year, 35 innings pitched. He's got 46 strikeouts. Tied for, what, third, I believe, on the team. Caleb Granger, the most strikeout, well, second most strikeouts on the team, and that is 54. And that's a walk. This is what has been the MO of people coming out of the pen is walking the leadoff hitter. You don't want to do that because you just make the game a lot closer and more difficult to win. And this is only a two-run ball game, and you have the tying run now at the plate and go-ahead run in the batter circle. Yeah. One swing of the bat can change everything. That ball a little bit low. Five balls in a row. Throw back to first, not in time. We saw it with Gremlin closer last night. He came and walked the first two guys, you know. And when it was on the verge of walking the third one. Ooh, that one just missing for a ball. Yeah, you got to talk to him, Coach. That's smart now to go out right now. He's thrown six pitches, six balls. Got to settle him down. Yeah. Bullpen stirring now for Florida a &M. Yeah, they're not going to waste a lot of time. Guy may be a closer during the regular season. He may not be a closer in the tournament. And you were talking about that. The law of averages say, you know, Granger got him six innings. Coach. Shoot talked about six, seven innings, and I know that's one of the games that they won against Alabama State. He got through the seventh inning. Right. So he might he probably should have let him go one more inning. Like I said, law of averages say that this is probably your, this is your best save. Yeah. The pitcher that the pitcher that saves, he said yeah. got three on the year. Right. But you got to get nine outs. And there's the key right there. You got one aboard. Tying run at the plate. Go ahead, run, runner on deck. That is a strike. Bill Bullpen is starting to heat up a little bit for Florida AM. Yeah, the shot could be a double play. Six to four, not in time at first base but they do get the lead runner. You know what I haven't seen much in this tournament? Only once, hit and run. Yes. The art of the hit and run is gone. Now, if you're not gonna bunt this guy, I would have been hitting and running. You know, because you gotta try and move people around, open up some spaces. Matos coming to the plate. First pitch is in there for a strike. So there's one out now. And if you're Florida A&M, you are counting those outs. There's eight of them left. <laughs> That's the way to do it. You got to count them. Swung on and missed. He 
He's got to go back out there. He shouldn't be going anywhere else up. Swung on and missed. It's just fouled. Not a good swing, but he, he bought it. He, he, lived, he fouled it off to live another day. Grant Harrison, 23 appearances this year, 2-2 two and two record. So that means he, somebody beat him twice. Yep. He's not perfect. Here's the pitch, up and away. He's given up one home run and one double this year. Swung on and hit in the left field. This one's going back to the warning track at the edge of it. Caught. The kid didn't bluff the track. Will Brown with the catch out in left field, and there's two away. You got to pull that one if you want it to go. That's the big one in the big alley. Will Brown had to keep going back on that one to the edge of the track. Yeah. Jack Hay from Parkland, Florida. Swung on and missed. You know, Florida A&M has a ton of transfers. From Alcorn, Alabama A&M. That one that came out of Auburn University, Montgomery, and that was Hunter Veets. Right there in Alabama State's yeah. backyard. Well, Jack, you got to make some hay right here, big guy. This is hay making time. Jack Hay trying to get aboard and continue this half of the inning. Ooh, just missed. Oh, this is hay making time. You're down to seven outs. Oh, three and one now. Strike. Jack Kay thought he was getting ready to take first base. He had thrown the bat already and started taking off his gloves. Ooh, right there yeah, at the yeah. knees. That's the pitch he wants to hit. Left hand hitters want to hit low pitches. Ooh, right there at the knees. This one popped up. Look out. And that's a souvenir for one of the young fans. It's amazing people don't know how to get out of the way of foul balls, huh? And you got a fan there. He came, like, with a shirt and tie on and it's. But back in the days. Hat. That's the way you did it. That's the way. Shirt sleeve crowd. White shirt, necktie, hat. They call them shirt sleeve crowd. Before your time. Oh, yeah. a little bit. A few years and a couple months. Yeah. Swung on, foul. Shirt sleeve crowd. Some of them in the big cities like New York and Chicago, they wore their suit. Oh, they did it. What's really been interesting about baseball is not only has it grown as a, you know, when you talk about players and coaches and things, but just what's available for fans at the ballpark now with yeah. concessions. That's yeah. a big thing now. Here's a pitch. Swung on and a strikeout. Great pitch by Grant Harrison. Cutting the hay down. Cutting the hay. <laughs> and now Alabama State, they only got six outs remaining if they're going to continue on to the winner's bracket. Florida a and they are six out away from upsetting the number one team. We move on to the top of the eighth. Back after this.
HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. Florida A&M up to bat in their half of the eighth inning. And at the plate, Todd Jackson to the top of the lineup. Well, this is that time of the game that you start taking medicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people will. Just talk to Bethune-Cookman's head coach, and he says, I say, well, Coach, you can relax. He said, I don't know, man. I got a few more gray hairs after that game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pitch a little bit low. Fill it up, bud. Doing great. I tell you, those kinds of close games, like you just saw with the Jackson game, this one now relatively close. I mean, you get some heart palpitations going pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know. This is what kills coaches right there. You walk the lead off in a, in a game that's tight. You know, you got to make him swing the bat. Ty Hanchi now on to hit for Florida A&M. Yes, and this one gets away from the catcher. It's what happened when you walk them. Things begin to happen. Now you got a runner at second. Ty Hanchi at the plate. Deep base hit could score the run here. A little bit high. Is this supposed to be uh, Alabama State closer? Uh, let's see. This is Luis. I believe he is one of their closers here. Oh, he got more he, than he one. Got, he got more than one of them. <laughs> He's fortunate. Most people don't have one. Rodriguez is the man, if I'm not mistaken. I think he has more than five saves, right? He has six. Four, six, three, ERA, two and one on the season. 24 appearances. Okay. But six saves. Uh-huh. This one bouncing right to the first baseman for Alabama State, Corey King. But the runner moves over to third. And there's some strategy involved in that because even though there's an out there, you move the runner over. Yeah, it's your quality out. It's yeah. your quality out. You move your runner from second and third where you don't need a hit to score him. A little bit high. The runner is doing his mechanics almost right. He's doing it really good, which means tells me if he if a ground ball is hit, either way with to one of those uh, fielders, he can make it. He's doing it right. Jared Weber hitting 306 coming into the game, 38 RBI, and seven home runs. Got to be careful where you put the ball with him though, because he can take it out of left field. He's doing his mechanics right. This one to the outside. 
See, I look at that because I know how important this run is. And you got to have the run on third base doing the, his mechanics right. In the eventuality, is a ground ball. Swung on and miss. Coach, when you say he's doing his mechanics right, what, what exactly is he doing down there? Well, what he's doing is walking. And when the ball goes through the hitter, he's stopping with balance, which allows him to either go forward or backward. So watch what I'm talking about. Walk, walk, walk. Now you see, the left he field. had balance. And remember I just said, you have to watch where you pitch it to him because he can take it in the left field. He did that. And now Weber is aboard. That run is big. Well, I tell you what, fans are getting their money's worth. Well, that's what they were supposed to do. Yeah, because you've seen some, as you said, quality baseball. Yeah. We've well, sort of felt that this game was going to be a good game because yeah. of the two teams involved. The next game should do the same thing because of the two teams involved. Rivalry game, you can throw the records out the windows. Yeah. In there for a strike. Yeah. Throw the records out the window. I'm trying to tell you, Grambling and Southern, if you're playing, if you're playing checkers, it's going to be a packed crowd. <laughs> but off. it's not our biggest rivalry. Huh? But it's not the biggest. Jackson is in baseball. In, ba in baseball, it is Jackson. Yeah. It's the biggest. And you know what? Football is growing that way, too. Well, you know, look, it's a, it's a Louisiana thing. That's the way I look at it. You know, Football, two, band, uh, keep going. Yeah, I mean, you know, band. Oh, the band. Good oh, Lord. Band. Yeah, the band, for sure. The band is the biggest, most popular program we have on our campus, more popular than football. Oh, absolutely. When you look at that, I mean, all you have to do is look at the Battle of the Bands every year yeah. where you're drawing 30,000, 40,000 fans on a Friday night right, right. to watch two bands play. Here's a oh. shot of the left field. This one's going back. Make hey, Jack. It's going back, and it is caught at the wall. Hey, Jack made hey. Look good on that. Well, Jack Hay almost ran out of room. <laughs> he knew where he was, and he showed the confidence. Sebastian Greco now coming to the plate for Alabama State, and here comes Coach Vasquez. And could this be all for his pitcher? It is. Yep, Luis Rodriguez is going to come out, and we are going to have a new pitcher in the ball game. And so we'll take a timeout here. Tell you about the new pitcher here in a second. Rodriguez comes out. Five or six three is the score now. Fam, you on top. We'll be right back. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. We are a limitless future, opening new doors, new ways, new everything. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. Chevrolet, honored to support the Southwestern Athletic Conference.
back here at the ballpark, and there are fans right there getting ready for the next game. They all got on their shirts. Young team that's around from the area. One of my former players brought his team out here tonight. Really? Yeah. He worked with youngsters in the area. So it's good to see that. So what's his name? His name is Jay Witherspoon. Witherspoon. And I don't know the name of his team. Well, we welcome everybody into the stadium. And, of course, we uh, just talked about all of the uh, great things here at the ballpark. I saw about 10 of my former players from the Atlanta area uh, yesterday and today. So it's always good to see those kids. Well, those young men now. Now Sebastian Greco coming to the plate as we are in the back half of this game. The back half? We back half of this game. Yeah, we're third. way beyond that. It's not midnight, <laughs> but it, it's not midnight, but it's quarter two. <laughs> uh -huh. There goes the runner going to second, and he's going to be in there for a stolen base. See, FAMU is being aggressive, though. They're up by three runs, and they want to get another, get in position for another run. You know, if it's anybody you want coming up to bat, it's these two guys, Greco and Perini. They both have over 50 RBIs for FAMU. Yeah, and you want to get, get a guy in scoring position, which they did, with two outs, so you, you really got a chance. Ooh, in there for a strike. I tell you what, you know, you really do like the fact that we've seen a lot of different high-level folks here mm -hmm. in the Atlanta area, and that's great for the conference, mm -hmm. great for fans to be able to come out and be touchable. And here's a shot in that the one, center field. This one, not gonna this stay one is not going to stay in the park. It is a home run for Sebastian Rico. And Florida A&M has opened this one up. What a game for the Rattlers. Charles called it. He said you had the right people up. Greco or Polini? Man, he's coming up next. Yeah. But I was about to say something before the hit was made about the pitcher. Again, if these guys were supposed to be top flight pitchers, I'm not seeing that in terms of being able to shut the door. Because what they were telling me was they could really shut the door down. And uh, they're good pitchers, they're just not what they were telling me. Because you gotta be able to come and stop people. Well, you know, and here's the other thing. You've got a very good hitting team that they're hitting on all cylinders yeah, right now. Yeah, right, they are now. Yeah, they are. Here's a pitch. And again, we, we, let's reemphasize. Regular season is different than tournament play. Yeah. It's a lot different. The energy is high. The, everything is more concentrated in terms of concentration, energy, desire, will to win. All of those things are packaged into a ball of ball heat, and the team that wanted the most yep. make the necessary sacrifices. Coach, let me ask this question. Uh, Alabama State has taken uh, five of six from FAMU, but FAMU, with that one victory, what does that do for the confidence of a team? Uh, that one victory had nothing to do with it. I just think that they looked at the tournament as a whole different ball of wax. You got me? You got a veteran coach. He understood that tournament play was going to be different and uh, and they put in they're putting it together here's another shot in the left field this one Jack Hay is going to get under and he makes the catch if it made any different you remember Prairie View lost to Texas Southern five out of the seven 
and it just doesn't make any difference in tournament play. Tournament play is a different animal, and for FAMU, they get two runs off of two hits. Three, three runs off of two hits. No errors, and nobody left on. Eight to three, our score. We'll take this time out. Back after this. Jamal George up to bat for Alabama State. First pitch in there for a strike. If you're Alabama State, you've got six outs. That's it. <laughs> six outs. If you're going to make hay, you better make them in the six outs. And that pitch to the inside. And I just don't understand why more strikes aren't being thrown when you're ahead. You got to throw strikes. Swung on and foul. Are they going to call that a fair ball? They call it a fair ball, and it's an out. Coach Vasquez is wondering what's going on here. Let's see if it hit him. No, it did not he hit did not him. did not call foul ball. But it, it hit him? Did it hit his foot? Oh, yes. 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 And you know, that might not be an, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, a reviewable. It's not reviewable. Oh, yes. I thought it hit the bat. Let me run it again. And now it, it didn't hit the bat. It hit his foot. It's shoe. Let's see. Here, he hit his shoe. Because if it hit the bat, it would have done something funny in the air. It didn't do anything funny once it got up. Shoe, right there. You see, it didn't do anything else funny other than that. And they are discussing it right now. And there's another question. Is, is something like that reviewable? But that's, that's why they're discussing it. Well, yeah. they said that he's out. It's not reviewable. Well. Not reviewable. See, this is something that maybe they need to look at and maybe you want to make this reviewable. If you're going to make the other stuff reviewable. We know it adds to making the game longer, but... It is what it is. Here's a shot by Corey King into left field and getting back on it 
is Will Brown, and he makes the catch. That's two outs in the inning now for Alabama State. It doesn't get any easier than that if you're going to hit fly balls. Now Christian Lopez getting ready to come to the plate. Well, Coach, if you are Florida A&M, you have got to be ecstatic about where you are right now. Yeah, I feel I would be feeling pretty good. But I know it ain't over. It ain't over. It ain't over till it's over. That one is a ball. Getting down to the last few outs, and this one's a ball. It then down to the wire. Man. And this one is a strike. <laughs> Swung on, this one's gonna be hit into right field for a base hit. Talk about just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, that's why you don't never know if this thing is over with. You gotta keep playing, you never know. Coach Rod Broadway, who coached with Grambling, North Carolina a t North Carolina Central, he says, if you make a good play, keep playing. If you make a bad play, keep, keep playing. playing. That's right. You just gotta keep playing. <laughs> that's right. You gotta keep playing, you just never know. Just Ooh. keep playing. Just keep playing. You hit it hard to catch it, keep swinging. Keep playing. You may hit a dribble and then may miss it. This is a funny game. Trent Jameson trying to extend the eighth inning here. The one thing they got, they got five run well, Grand Slam can't beat them on time. So they've got that cushion that you always look for. Do they call it the Grand Slam cushion? Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's that, but we know that it can't beat you or tie you. Right. <clears throat> and I secretly used to look at that board when it got late to see if we had it. Knowing that we, it's what, this is what we're looking for, you know? Strikes are harder to come by late in the ball game. Strikes and hits. Yeah. This one Look back up the middle. And that's going to be a base hit. And on first and second, did he get to that? Did he get the bag? Yeah. See, this is not over. You just don't know. You just... You, we talk about you hit them hard, they may catch you. You hit that one soft and found a way to get it up the middle. So. so now runners at first and third. And it ain't over. Hey, you're good, G. You and Alabama good. State with now two aboard. Time out on the field. And we have a pinch runner now. <laughs> uh. Pinch runner is Devontae Bailey. Okay. 
Kerrigan Edmondson now batting. Got a pinch runner. Yeah. Devontae Bailey. There's another strike. That's what you got to do is pound the strike zone. Force him to make an adjustment. Ooh, close. Close. Kerrigan Edmondson hitting 391 on the year. Here's a pitch. This one gets away. A run is going to score. Well, now, Alabama State not dead yet. You see, now the pitcher, where was he where he was? Knowing that the run is coming from 30 was down the first baseline. Maybe we can capture that. You know, little things like that. He probably had a play had he gone to the plate. Watch where the pitcher was. Watch where the pitcher is. Now, why would he go there? Look, with the runner is coming. Now, he can't get there. Had he been there, there's a play on him. Yep, that's right. That's right. So, the catcher, if he, he goes and gets the ball, the pitcher goes there. There's a strike, and they get out of it. Well, that is a huge strike, but at Alabama State does score a run. And if they come up in the, when they come up in the ninth inning, a grand slam could tie it. There it is. That's why that run is important. Three runs for FAMU, one for Alabama State in the eighth. Six outs left in the ninth. Three for FAM, three for Alabama State. We'll see if we go to extra innings back after this. <laughs> Well, Florida a &M getting ready to come to the plate. It looks like Coach will make a couple of changes here, possibly. Or if he's just looking at his lineup, not sure. Leading off. Adam Hitter-Motor now will come to the plate here. This one shot into shallow right. And coming over and making a play on the ball is Randy Flores. Now Will Brown coming to the plate. Alabama State need to get three up, three down, and go to the dugout, fired up, and see what they could do. 
coming out of it. And for Alabama State. And then that's Melendez pitching. They didn't do a bad job, uh, the bullpen. It's just they're not overpowering like I thought people had told me. They, they were overpowering. So they're not that, but they're not, they didn't do that bad of a job. Oh, no, not at all. That pitch is a ball. Just that Florida uh, a and M. I I pitched them today and then got big hits when they had to. Absolutely. Swung on and missed foul. Well, both Grambling and Southern have been uh, watching this game. Swung on and missed. That's a strike. And it's two outs now. And wondering what are the possibilities? Could it be us next? Be the one to win tomorrow and wait for the, <laughs> and play the winner out of this team, right? That's right. Yeah, this game. Well, this game here, no, the winner would play, the the winner today plays against, well, wait for the winner between the loser here against Prairie View. That's right. That's right. So whoever loses here, go ahead and beat Prairie View, they got to come back and play them. That's right. And, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, because Southern and Gremlin are on different sides. Different sides. They're in the bottom part of the bracket. Yeah. That's a strike. And Jalen Niles a little frustrated at that last call. Don't get frustrated. You're leading with only needing three outs. Yeah. And there's a chopper, and it will... Go to the shortstop, long throw, not there. That's where you just have to out hustle the throw. That's right. Just right over the head, just in a sweet spot. And runs good. That was gonna be a tough out to make. Oh yeah. The Florida A&M has won a board, Todd Jackson now coming to the plate from Jacksonville. And this is a shot, and it'll be an out at second. Well, this is what they've been waiting for. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It's going to come down to three outs. Either Alabama State will win, go to extra innings, or they'll be playing early tomorrow. We'll find out down to the wire here in Hotlanta. Back after this. Well, it all comes down to this, Coach Kador. Alabama State will win, go to extra innings, or they will get into the loser's bracket. Your regular season record don't mean a thing. Randy Flores 
McIntosh. If you don't Matos. come in this tournament and, ex and execute, that regular season record don't mean nothing. It means something, but it doesn't mean anything to the teams competing. And how many times have we seen the number one team lose in the tournament? A lot of times. And there's only one bid for the SWAC in the NC2A tournament inside. Right. I've lost at number one seed. We still won, but we lost. We had to go in the loser's bracket. That's no fun to have to come out of the loser's bracket. No, no fun. But and here we go with the wall. You got to make them swing the bat. If it hits it out of the park, it's better having him swing than walk. Walks are dangerous. Well, McIntosh coming to the plate. Walks are dangerous, I'm telling you. You can't defend. There's no defense for walk. He's taking off. Here is the throw. He's safe at second. No defense for Wong. Why is he running? I don't know, but this is unconventional. Well, unconventional times here for yeah. Alabama State. Yeah, he made it. Good piece of base running. Here's a shot in left field. They ain't gonna McIntosh catch that. is back going back on this one and it's caught. It. What it a catch! Caught by Will Brown. What a catch! Will Brown with a big catch and there's one out. Oh, he went a long ways to get that one. That one had getting over the wall written all over it. Just stayed in just enough. Oh, Will Brown, did you do it, Will? Look at that catch. Yeah. Uh, he only had a few steps. And he made a really good throw. That went in there for a strike. Got to bring it home to Mama right here. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit into right field. It's going to go foul. This one gets away from the catcher. He's gonna try to throw it home, not in time. Alabama State scores a run. One at a time, that's all you can really do if you're Alabama State. Yeah, they're down to three now. Yep. That was a great slide. Boy, it was a big out uh, catch in left field too. If that ball gets in, you really, ooh. One and two the count with one out. I'd say probably this has been one of the best games I've seen Florida a and play all season. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to throw strikes. You can't yeah. walk this guy. You can't play. You got to make him swing the bat. Here's a pitch. This one in the dirt, another that's walk. Not, that's not good. Another walk. You're buying trouble. The tying run on deck for Alabama State. And now the Alabama State faithful on their feet. There is action in the Florida a and bullpen. Will they make the change here? You need two outs. Yeah. 
if they, are they going to make hay here? It's a good question. <laughs> Jack, this is your time to make hay. You hit this out of here, you really bring the house down. Yeah, because then you'll be within one run. Yeah. Coach, what should Jack Hay be looking for here? Well, he should be looking for a fastball or any mistake over the plate that's up. But mainly a fastball. Warming up in the bullpen for Florida A&M is Zach Maria. They've got the music mission impossible going. I tell you what. Oh, man, isn't this good stuff? Jack trying to make hay at the plate. Here's the pitch. That one missing for a ball. Grant Harrison needs two outs. Here's the pitch. Oh, he misses the ball, too. Now the pitcher is, you know, you know it's not a strike. Get the ball and try to get the ball over the plate. You threw a curveball to that little guy over there with 3-2. You were asking for trouble. That one's in there for a strike. Swung on foul. Harrison trying to close things out. One out here. The pitch down the first baseline foul. Here's a pitch, swung on foul again. Well, remember, when batters start fouling things off, the longer that at bat goes. Yeah, yeah, the better it is for the hitter. You nailed it. Grant Harrison, up high, that's gonna be ball three. Full count. There is no need to run, send the runner, but he might, you know. Tying run on deck, one out. The delivery by Harrison. And he walked, hey. And now, the tying run at the plate. He's gotta go get it. Yeah, no doubt. We're gonna have a pitching change. Here in Hot Atlanta. This is why I tell you, you don't know who your closer is. This is great amateur at his baseball at his best. We'll take a timeout here while they make the pitching change. Coming into the ball game will be Zach Maria, the senior. Back after this. Malik and Lisa are ready to buy the home of their dreams. That's serious money, Gigi. It's okay. I feel you. And Rocket can help with that. When you buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, you can get up to $10,000 cash toward closing with Rocket Mortgage. It's time to start your own legacy. You got this, and Rocket's got you. Visit onlywithrocket.com to get started today. Dropping. Rapid rehydration initiated. Unlock specialized blend of five electrolytes. Rapid rehydration to get you back on your game. Gator Light. Now available in powder and Gator Light Zero Sugar.
Back here as the sky begins to turn from day to night, lights are on in the skyline, overshadowing the stadium here at the campus of Georgia Tech University. And inside the stadium, things have started to heat up as Alabama State has already pushed across one in this inning. And they've got two in a board with the tying run now at the plate. Ali LaBred. Now at the dish, Corey King on deck, who could be the hero. And we talk a lot about trying to get the right, the, the time run on. That pitch missing for a ball. And remember, a new pitcher in the ball game, Zach Maria, who's in the contest now. Eight to five, our score. And it's tough for coaches because you know you, you're doing the best you can to put someone in who you think can stop the bleeding. Yep. And it, you know, you said it best. You just never know from day to day what you will get out of the bullpen. Never know. Even in the in the major league, only the elite teams know what they're getting. Everybody is struggling to find them. Yep. It's just that difficult. Again, I live in the city where the LSU was number one. They can't find anyone coming out of the bullpen. They could be lead by eight run and they give them up. Yep. And they hired, off. they hired a major league pitching coach, paid him $800,000. He can't figure it, fix it. I'm in the wrong business making $800,000. <laughs> <laughs> coach, let me ask, what, what, what's the hitting approach? How do you take on these sidewinders, these guys well, that come from down under? Uh, you got to stay in and think the other way because that's the only way you can stay on the ball. So you think the other way, meaning you think it to right center so he can stay on the ball. And then if he miss inside, he can close. There Here's it is. a shot in the center field. Base hit. Here comes the runner to second. Base is loaded. And we just talked about the grand slam. It's set up. It's never going to get any better. And coming to the plate, Corey King. He will wear a crown if he can get this to happen. Well, he's a king. Why not wear the crown? It would only be fitting. Big moments for Corey King. Bases loaded. Bottom of the ninth. Here's the pitch. Outside for a ball. Now you start walking him, and you're in real trouble. <laughs> yeah. They've already walked two. This guy's got his hand full to try and get two outs. Double, double play ends it. Because Outside. he's on a stage he had been in on before. And this stage could be a little one frightening. Right here, one pitch, let's go. Nerves can get the best of you. We just saw Corey King taking a deep breath. Zach Maria with the pitch. In there for a strike. And now it's just one pitch at a time. Zach Maria, 6.75 ERA. He's got two saves on the year. Four and two this season. Here's the pitch. Oh, he just missed on that one. And the catcher turning around to ask the umpire. Not good, catcher. Don't do that. It's not in that situation. Umpires are human, too. Oh, it looked like yeah. it was at the knees. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the umpire. They're human, too. I got to look at it from here and see what we're looking at. This shot in the right field is going Over back, here. and Over it here. is caught. Oh. A run will score for Alabama State. Whoa. That was nearly out of here. What a catch it's by going the right down fielder, the Jared Weber. It's going down I to thought the for a second they got in that urban jet stream. <laughs> <laughs> and he did exactly what we say. Try to take it the other way. One run was in, is in, two runs for the inning. He had to go over the shoulder to catch that. Eight, six to score. Still, this thing is really right down to it. The winning run now at the plate for the Hornets. How big was that home run 
Oh. Well, actually, that run that came in yeah. <laughs> back in the eighth inning, yeah. cutting the lead to eight to five. Yes, yes. Or I'm sorry, eight to four. Yes, eight to four. Well, eight to three, wasn't it? Eight to three, that's because right. Because we said now a home a grand slam can't beat you or tie you. Here's a pitch. Outside for a ball, 1-0. and Every pitch counts. This is really good tournament play. This is what it should be like. Maria with the pitch, swung on, foul. Kids playing their hearts out, trying to get a, a chance to be champion. This is what it's all about. Fans are clapping and cheering. Some are praying. They're doing a little bit of everything here. Some are even eating to make that way. <laughs> Some are taking blood pressure medicine. Here's the pitch. Just to the outside. Now this hitter should think, remember, you want to think the other way on him because he's going to pitch toward the out. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to pitch it to the outer part of the plate. Christian Lopez trying to be the hero. Here's a shot foul. Now it's even. Two and two the count. Oh my goodness. Oh my oh lady. Oh Nelly. That's what I want to say. <laughs> two and two to Christian Lopez. Maria. Swung on yeah, and hit yeah, in the yeah. right field. That's a base hit. If it gets by Miss Trouble. There's oh. going to be Here comes the run in the base. Send him. Base. Send him. Oh. Here comes side tie ball game. We have a tie ball game. Jack Hay and LaPred score. And we have a double by Christian Lopez. We have tied it up at eight. The winning run is at second base. This is why I said you got to hit it the other way against this sidewinder. And the <laughs> Give Coach Vasquez credit. He didn't hold him up at third. He said, we got two outs. We sent it him. There it is. Watch him. We got to get back. He didn't play around. We'll go back and we'll see what I how he, how he did that. He was watching it. Okay. The winning run at second. New batter for Alabama State, Jaden Sloan. Let, we'll see how Vasquez did a great job. We're going to cr critique it here. He knows that he's got to do something. He doesn't want the next hitter to be, be able to knock him in. He's down the line. He's looking at him. He said, you got to make it home. Really good job by Coach Vasquez. Jaden Sloan, the junior. He's taking a deep breath. Sloan hitting 347 this year. Definitely capable of getting this extra base hit. Sloan in the left field. And it's it is. back. The it's game over. is over. Here comes the runner in. This is going to be an Alabama State Three. win. Christian Lopez coming in from second. And Alabama State scores five runs in the bottom of the ninth to beat a very gritty Florida AM team by the count of nine to eight. What a come from behind victory from the boys from Montgomery. Well, I'm glad we got you, Santora. I don't think we, my man would have had the lungs to do what you did say. You jumped up and you made it happen. Remember we talked about going into the bottom of the ninth inning? But he didn't have enough run. You never have it. Because you don't know what you're getting when you go to that bullpen. Unbelievable game between these two teams. And once again, a classic here at the tournament. And there you see it once again, the base hits by the junior, Jaden Sloan, coming in 
in the ninth inning in order to seal the deal for the Hornets. They are on to the winner's bracket, and they will wait for the winner between tomorrow's elimination game between Florida A&M and Prairie View. Let's go down on the field to Charles Bishop. Santoria, I got the man of the hour right here. Jaden Sloan with the game-winning base hit, man. Walk me through it. You know, I was just getting ready in the dugout. I knew we subbed our DHN, so I knew I was going to have the opportunity to, to try to come in, get a hit from my team. All I was trying to do was stay calm in the moment, you know, enjoy the moment. So just stay in the moment and get a good pitch to hit, and I got it. So I'm blessed. What does it say about this Alabama State team chase down fam you tonight? It, it shows our resilience. Yes, sir. It shows our resilience. We got a great group of guys. Nobody gave up even when we went down. So I'm just glad that we were able to string, string some hits together, do whatever we had to do, and we show what we can do tonight. Let's celebrate the win, buddy. Unbelievable game. I don't know what I'm talking about, Jack. Unbelievable game by Alabama State. And you talk about being able to eat dinner a little bit easier tonight. That was a marquee win for this team. I would say it is. And that's what champions have to do. They have to find a way to win. And I kept believing in that team because I wasn't that sold on the bullpen that fame you kept bringing out there. Wow. What a game here in Atlanta. Final score, 9-8. to eight. Alabama State puts up five in the bottom of the ninth in order to win. And they are on to the winner's bracket. Florida a and will have to recover very quickly, not have a letdown, and battle against Prairie View tomorrow. And that game will be at 9 a.m. So they don't have a lot of time, less than 12 hours. This is Swank at his best. It's, it's putting itself on the big stage. The games have been outstanding. We're very pleased with the result. Let's keep it rolling. Southern Grambling next. We're going to take this break and get ready for Grambling and Southern. As, as you can hear the music here in Atlanta, the SWAC tournament is lit. Final score, 9-8. to eight. We'll see you in just a little bit for Grambling and Southern here on the SWAC Digital Network.